so we bring uh, the concept of uh, Kubernetes and uh, IoT gateways together with OpenStack together, and today is uh, about time to show up publicly. So there's two parts, a uh, boring presentation, of course, and then real, real live demo for you. So about 15 and 15 minutes, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, TCP Cloud, so we, uh, we are focused to providing uh, open software to everywhere. So we're building private clouds based on OpenStack, based we're building now Kubernetes, of course, and we're working with uh, a partnership all around the world right now, so India, Europe, United States, and everywhere. So we already did some nice projects, so I encourage you to check it out our websites. And now what we are doing, basically, that we bring, we're doing the open source software, uh, we think we do some CI, CD, and we develop an open source, everything is open source from us, so we can go to uh, opentcpcloud.org and find out architecture where it's all the Git repositories and everything. We are active contributors to OpenStack. We are active contributors to OpenContrail. And you can find out uh, reference architecture, how to build it, and even uh, heat templates and everything to start up all the cloud together with logging, billing, and everything. And recently, and this is a few months back, in December or uh, last year, he was uh, asked by Smart Check Smart City Cluster if he can help with some project in Smart City. Uh, it's a Smart City project uh, led by Smart City Check Smart City Cluster, which is a really nice bunch of uh, IT companies or other companies, utility companies in Czech Republic. They are focused to bring new projects and smart cities to all Europe, not just Czech Republic. And they have uh, really nice pilot city in PCX South Bohemia, 30,000 to 5,000 people, and they agree with the city board to start some nice projects. And first of it, it's smart spotlights. So this best uh, place where you want to do smart city first, because it's owned by the city. They have all the servicing companies. They have all in place. There's the uh, there's the energy at least eight hours during the night or something like that. So it's a really nice place. And it's distributed across the city itself. So they start thinking about changing the actual sodium la uh, bulbs to LED and to save some money. And also during the process, they realize that this is a really nice uh, point where they start to measure uh, not just uh, environmental data, but also, for example, traffic flow, uh, some management, energy saving, uh, e-commerce marketing, some you know some funny games around the city and, and something like that, and also some lifestyle and which is basically uh, blinking lamps or something like that. <laughs> so high-level model. Uh, in high level, it's really simple, but there are a few challenges we need to solve, and one of them is that there are two outputs, two major outputs: uh, open data for everyone all around the planet. And second, partner apps, which have direct access to all uh, gatherer data or direct access to sensors in the end after gateways. So it's really difficult if you realize that you have gateways, you have some internet between, you have di different sensoric platforms, everything must be open, and then you have, data, you have multiple databases from different vendors, and you need to collect everything together and then separate it to open data pretty securely and everything. So. Uh, we choose to use our cloud IoT platform, which is basically OpenStack together with OpenContrail, extend it directly to gateways. So we define what is a gateway. In our case, we don't develop hardware. We are not hardware developers. So uh, from, from, from our point of view, gateway is whatever. And you can place vRouter, which is part of SDN, uh, and where we can place uh, Kubernetes and Docker. So that's gateway for us. And then we are able to do whatever uh, whatever the city wants in standard way. So basically, uh, I talk about OpenStack and everything. So of course, if you realize that in the small city, where it's 35,000 people, it's around 3,000 endpoints, 3,000 centric platforms. So with multiple uh, sensors on it, so there's about five to from five to ten thousand sensors 
get doing every second some data. So it's a really big data. And it's a small city, so there's 300 gateways. And to manage it and keep it working you know, during, some, uh, so during some years, the design must be really, really proven. So, and also the uh, flow must be you know, independent. You cannot have one point where all data comes in in one time. You know, that's really difficult and very expensive in the end. So uh, we figure out that, uh, yeah, that's, that's the sh chassis we, uh, we did to together with Czech Technical University, which is able to place all the independent sensor into it and Raspberry Pi somewhere and to you know, just process some data directly on the, gate, directly on the uh, spotlights. So some conceptual overview. So we think, uh, think about uh, how, to, how to solve this task. So in conceptual, it's really simple. We have data center. The data center, you know, data center is something common. It's almost standardized. There's everything you know in data center. So it's really simple. Build cloud platform, do some processing, and do some APIs and visualization. That's that's simple task. Together with all these technologies like OpenStack and OpenContrail and storages and networking part and and you know all these past tools and everything. So how to get the data into and still keep the multi-tenancy. So we uh, place on the gateway Docker together with Kubernetes to manage it. You know, manage 300 gateways is not simple. So 300 Docker's, it's, it's much, much, much complicated. So Kubernetes is the choice. And then the SDN, and why SDN? Because that's the only way how we can securely uh, connect uh, the sensor, which is have privilege more to container, and then in one network, process it in, you know, in this case, in MPLS, in VPN, translated data center, or data centers, your choice. So we are able, and the container have different operating system, which I have here in detail schema. So you are able, this is the gateway, this is the data center. So here I am able to have different type of operating systems with different type of drivers and directly connect different types of centric platforms. There's the IQRF, which is low voltage mesh network. There's the Bluetooth, for example, for other sen sensoric networks. There's GPIO for direct uh, you know, control lights and whatever. And there's Docker, Kubernetes, VRouter, VPN, simple, simple, sch simple scheme and working. And that's what we will show you today, how these two worlds working together. And just about the plans, what we want to show you today, this uh, machine is in Prague and this data center is in PSEC, which is 120 kilometers away, so it's really uh, processing to some in some scale, uh, at least. Uh, from application point of view, we have in data center, we have some VMs, which is directional, and you know it, there's the floating IP, public access, and a gateway, we have container with sensor in one network. And we decide, in the end, uh, for demo, make it a little bit more, and we will uh, do two separate SDN networks, two separate environments, and we will connect them. So there will be uh, converge between two different and, and independent networks. So this is output from our pilot. Let's just check out the time. I'm in time, fine. Uh, so this is the output from pilot. So in pilot, we uh, took the data from crossroads, and we count uh, vehicle passages and pedestrian passages through the crossroad in four or five crossroads in, in, in city. And we make it real time, so we are able to see what's traffic right now and where, and you see you know, the uh, trends in the city and everything. And this is just for pilot, and it's very simple, very simple pilot. We, we did it in 14 days, everything, you know, from sensor to, to, uh, to website. So in the end, this is just for proof of concept that it's really flexible and you, are, you can really fast have something which is working. And now, uh, because, and now the best st best part for you, there will be live demo uh, by uh, Kuba. Kuba is a CTO of our company, and uh, he will show you how to connect everything together, together and how this is working. Okay, can you hear me? Does it work? Yeah. Okay, so let's do some fun stuff. We prepared really live demo because we don't like slideware, so we prefer more the reality. So. Uh, I believe that uh, it should work. Uh, I tested three times before this session, so 
it should work. <laughs> so uh, at this picture, I displayed what we have. So uh, on this side, we have uh, Kubernetes and uh, open contrail with three nodes. One of nodes is uh, ARM-based Raspberry Pi 2 with a Debian. And then we have two Intel-based uh, gateways. We are calling this these nodes as uh, IOT gateways, and we are still prototyping <coughs> what will be most suitable if it will be uh, Raspberry Pi based on ARM, or it will be any other uh, Intel uh, AMD 86 based uh, uh, operation system. So I have this side, and on the left side I have OpenStack in the data center. Uh, which is 100 kilometers away from, approximately, away from this cluster. And here I have virtual machine uh, at my OpenStack with the Graphite. And Graphite is a time series uh, database for storing metrics and uh, performance statistics and the data. And the idea is launch the IQRF collector, which is uh, Ubuntu ARM-based uh, Docker container, which should use USB uh, stick, uh, which is used as a collecting metrics from the IQRF full mesh network, process this data in the, s in the container and send them to the graphite. In this demo, we don't have real IQRF full mesh network, so I will demonstrate how to write data on the private network directly to the graphite. So, and then I have IOT collector standard based Docker on the uh, standard architecture. So, if we start, I have a Kubernetes master, and as I mentioned, these are two Intel based uh, IOT gateways, and this is my Raspberry Pi uh, Jesse server. Uh, I don't have any pods here right now. So we start with IQRF uh, Docker <coughs> container Docker pod. So Kubernetes create f arm IQRF launch. And if we check what's the inside, oh, sorry, uh, uh, we can see that we have replication controller with one replica. This is the application selector. This is metadata labels for virtual network which will be created with this name. And then we have a container with some dummy sleep command to just show that the container run. We are running in privilege mode to be able uh, take the uh, uh, metrics from the device <coughs> on the Raspberry and we are mounting dev bus USB to be able to access uh, USB on the container. And here we have node selector, uh, which is ARM. If we check the pod, the pod is running. And to believe me that it's really Raspberry, I can log into my Raspberry. You can see here that it's Raspberry Jesse. And I have here my uh, co collector. So on this Raspberry, we are not running the Raspbian or uh, or a Hyperiot, but we are running clean upstream Debian Jesse, uh, where we compiled uh, by ourselves the kernel and all the stuff inside the image. And what's the funny part is that we compiled for the ARM the vRouter. The vRouter is a kernel module of the OpenContrail. OpenContrail is open source solution for the SDN, and this is one of the most tricky parts was to build a vRouter for this platform. If we go inside the container, we can see that it running and uh, it has an IP address. So we have IQRF Docker Container 1 in our one node which is Raspberry. Now let's create another pods as IoT collectors. Again if we check what's the inside. Uh, we have two replicas of uh, image IoT collector. This is again named for the virtual network. I will show later how I can see the networks. And node selector is AMD64. Uh, 
and if we check the pods, it's running. Check the nodes, it's on node 6 and node 5. Switch to node 5, this is the node 5, and here I should have my IOT collector. <coughs> and let's jump inside. Uh, and we have an IP address. Right, so we have IOT collectors on the place. And now we need to check the database uh, on the master server. So we have here our OpenStack, which is based on uh, OpenContrail, and this is really Skillo. S and I have here Graphite server. Uh, this Graphite server is proxied uh, into this public IP address. This is accessible, so you can open it. You believe me that it's real. So this is proxy of uh, the GUI for the Graphite server. Here I have a Graphite, and if we want to now create connectivity between the pod and uh, Graphite, we can try it. So the IP is, maybe I have in history, 10, 150, 30, so this this IP address. So. The ping does work does not working, and the reason is that we have two contrail controllers. We are feathering them together, but the virtual network for the pods it's created dynamically. When you launch the pod, it generates and creates networks. But this network has not access to any place, so we have to put their route target for this network to route between my graphite and my pod in the container. So I have here the contrail dashboards. This is the this is the dashboard of some our one of our pre-production deployments. So you can see how many instances interfaces I have here on eight hypervisors. And if I go inside to virtual networks, I have this network. Uh, no, sorry, this network, which is network <laughs> private network in Neutron. Uh, for my uh, virtual machine, yeah. If if we check this before, you can see that we have one seven two dot ten dot ten dot one, which is from this, sorry, from this part. And if I check the values here, I believe you can see it. My root target is fifty and f uh, and fifty. <coughs> yeah. So if I want to connect. The pod network with this network, I have to add same root target to my network in the pod. So let's run here the ping again. And jump on the second contrail. Here we have just three nodes, which are our, our gateways. So I have node 6, node 5, and this is my Rubsberry. Yeah. And if I go here. I can choose our IOT collector network. This is it. Click on edit and in root target I will add the value 50 and 50. And you can see that I'm pinging. So now I created the dynamic tunnel in the private networks without any public IP between my container and the graphite server which uh, runs on the open stack and with the encapsulation MPLS uh, over GRE between docker container in in uh, Prague and 100 kilometers located away my virtual machine uh, in the data center so I have a connection and now let's show how it use it so how to write some metric into graphite so now I have some random and test some some metrics. Graphite is pretty easier. You just write on the specific port the, the metric and the time and it's stored and you can generate nice graph, do some derivation and a and lot of stuff. So here I have th these two metrics and I will jump back to container 
I prepared uh, this command to show you how it looks. This is the private IP address of my Graphite server. And here I am in the collector, right? So I should be able to uh, one second, I should be able to ping this, which is my graphite. And now I will call this. Uh, okay, just put here like go back on CMD and put here some values. And this is exactly how works the sensors. Yeah, you are taking some values and send the values to the time series server, uh, which is in the data center. So I write several metrics with these numbers and current date to my uh, graphite server. And if I refresh my graphite, you can see that in local I have KubeCon and in KubeCon I have metric CMD and if we customize this value to one hour we should see it's ah it's yeah now you can see this line it's it's very small maybe I can <coughs> put it like five minutes yes can you see this line so this is the here is five here is four so it's not so good to showing but this is how exactly we are storing the metrics from the from the hypervisors regarding CPU network so it's completely same technology like we are using every day with our private cloud deployments in our customers data center so we just reuse this concept to be able to show how can looks the IOT platform and I have also here the uh, the, the Kubernetes dashboard with uh, uh, real-time containers and the last stuff what I want to show is the power of the contrail stuff that I have Raspberry Pi and from the Raspberry Pi I can see the CPU utilization, the memory utilization and I can scroll down the all routing tables inside uh, inside of the devices dynamically and I can peer my standard edge BGP router with my pot on the on the Kubernetes because it's using still same the technology and uh, same still same the concept so uh, that's it from my showcase so I believe that uh, all of you uh, understood what what I'm showing so are there any questions thank you for a uh, nice presentation and demo I had a question in your demo you uh, made sure to run a specific node uh, uh, on the arm by specifying the node type in in a production scenario I would guess you would have uh, hundreds or thousands of such nodes and in an IoT context uh, typically uh, uh, you would like to run specific container on a specific node so you because you would like to get specific yeah. sensor data so how do you deal with that yeah there is parameter um, I cannot remember. There is parameter for definition of your pod or replication control where you can specify on which node uh, you want to launch the pod specifically. Yes, yeah. So it's like the same principle like we use for detecting the platform but you, you can add another label to specify not just platform but specific device in the end. Other questions? Yeah. Thanks. 
What type of data store do you use um, under underneath Grafana? I suppose it's not Whisper. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's directly Graphite. It's not Grafana. What you what we looking, looking? No, sorry. I mean, uh, how do you save the data on uh, on Drive? I mean, when you install Graphite uh, by default, it uses Whisper, right? Carbon yeah. and then Whisper. Yeah, yeah. But it has big performance problems. So I suppose when you speak about a lot, a lot, a lot of data, do you go through InfluxDB or I don't know Elasticsearch. What do you use? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have m multiple graphite basically for this storing, and uh, we are using the, uh, the uh, it's a service which enable to uh, write mul into multiple graphites, right? So you you can write into multiple uh, m multiple nodes, and. Now we are playing also if in FluxDB and uh, Grafana, yeah. So this is this is just the one of the samples what what we what we want to show. Yeah, the, the use case is also uh, not used uh, single platform. That's uh, one of the most strongest part of our concept is that you can you can you know iterate whatever you want. So you can in one time you can have multiple database clusters and you can feed them you know in one time with all the data. At once, so basically we testing. We have multiple. We using like we selecting the containers, and we you know divided the sensors. For example, for metrics, which uh, generates something in the container. So we, for example, uh, it, um, we co compute the data directly on the gateway. For example, from from uh, the plat sensor platform. So this this sensor platform what we what we showed before. So we compute the data just you know right on the sensor platform. The sensor platform send the collection of data to gateway, and then we have specific, you know, different containers do different things, so the data don't flow at once. That that's the problem. You know, if everything go in one time, that's the problem. So we we can you know do every something, and a lot of stuff we can do directly on city edge. We call it city edge, so directly on gateways in the city, and because we can combine. ARM gateways together with Intel-based gateways, you can have stronger and, and weaker, uh, I mean now with power uh, or performance, you can have different gateways and compute different stuff. So it's more about you know how to, de how to design and what you storing and what, what you really measure in the end. Um, how are you handling security? Because effectively you've got Raspberry Pis, you know, I can come along with a screwdriver and just peel one of these things off a lamppost and take it home and plug it in. and. I've got access to everything then, right? Yeah, uh, the security is something what uh, it's interesting in whole Kubernetes, right? So it's uh, now you are sending just the <coughs> metrics and the raw data, and it's not something specific uh, to identification some people or something like this. So it's without uh, without specific description what data means. You you are not really able to understand them so we are measuring basic stuff so the security is something what we are still solving yeah? it's it's prototype yeah you, you have to understand that this project started in the end of last year so we are still in prototyping yeah, also the security have multiple la layers Kuba talks about the uh, data so if we need secure the data or not that's the first part and second there's a technical you know there's the layers so we use the VPN end-to-end -end VPN between uh, through, through the internet between gateway and gateway at route and gateway that's the first layer and then we segregate so uh, then we segregate this from network so the pods inside don't see each other that's the first thing so from internal point of view if somebody breaks through for example sensor platform which is also because we're using mesh network so somebody can hack mesh network or something like that so they they just hack the, the pot inside inside the uh, the gateway, so another sensors could be safe. So there are multiple inputs yeah. to the security. So it's really complex in the end. So yeah, technically it's design and some security f measures. Then it's monitoring because we are able to monitor everything. We grab the data. Uh, I uh, before I show you the the our open TCP cloud ORG uh, uh, MK20 call it architecture. So we collect all the logs, you know, by hacker. So we call all the logs. So there's another security stuff. Uh, from Contrail, you can all the flows sent to uh, send to some another analytic tools. You know, so they're different, but there's possibility to do the security. But in the end, it's all about the data you you, you gather. Have you had any go this with the style of blocks and graphic data that improve one of the clients? 
Ah, uh, not yet. <laughs> Nobody tried to hack us, but you've seen that in the end, it's, it's, if somebody hacks the mesh network, go to the port, they can use the NC to send something to Graphite, so it's possible, but nobody did it <laughs> yet. <laughs> so I hope nobody here <laughs> is curious right now. <laughs> um, other questions? I would ask about the Raspberry Pi and the Firebook system. What was the reason not to use the Hyperion? Like, was not reliable? Or was uh, the the first stuff is. Sorry, can you just repeat the question? Sorry? Can you just repeat the question for the video? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the question is why we use Debian and not use the Hyperion or Raspberry. So the, we started with Rapsbian, and Rapsbian now doesn't have, uh, uh, it, it's complicated with Linux uh, kernel headers. And we need to the, the compile the module for vRouter. So we need the Linux headers. So we switch to Hyperiot. Uh, the Hyperiot is quite fine, but again, in the end, if you want to do this stuff, you need to build your image by yourself to Reinstalled and prepare all the packaging stuff inside before you are putting on Raspberry because installation of the packages on Raspberry takes very long. So now we are pre-building the image with all the stuff, with the Docker, with a kernel module for the specific version, and uh, this is how we we also hit some issues in corrupting SD cards. So now, for example, this what running here is like. SD card with boot partition, with read only, and then we have a normal partition and USB drive to be sure that it's not corrupting the file system. Short answer, yeah, reliability is that is the key. <laughs> so. Other questions? Okay, well in that case, thank you very much, Adam, Jakob. Very interesting, great. Another beer, thank you guys.